This is a video, uh, like others on my channel, where I'm going to go through a Case 324 chisel plow. Now this particular toy is still in a rough finished state. Uh, final sanding, uh, cleaning with acetone, let alone primer and paint has not been done yet. I'm doing this on purpose as this is a very different toy based on a very different design by J.I. Case that was produced between 1970 and 1976. This is the prototype, and uh, there are five that were made in this series. And for those that uh, acquired these toys from me, I just want to, I'm creating this video so that uh, it's better understood and explained how this uh, particular cultivator, or should I just say chisel plow worked. Uh, only because the, um, not too many were made, not too many are known ab about, I guess, in the wider farming circles, but more importantly, the reason for this is that this, unlike many uh, chisel plows or cultivators or discs of the time, this, the wing system and how the uh, rock shaft works and interacts from the wings to the, to the center, to the main frame is based on gravity. So when the toys uh, are back, uh, are shipped to where they are going to, uh, the new owners have an idea how to set them up a, a bit properly and uh, to suit their um, the needs in their collection. I'm going to do this video in, in a couple of different parts showing which how this works and uh, so that those who acquire the toys again can see how what it's all about. I will take this video down in several months time uh, because as the time of this recording these toys have yet to be painted and they've yet to be shipped. So uh, I'll stop here at this point and uh, go to the next part. In this part, I've turned the toy uh, facing backwards to the camera so we can see how the wings lock upwards. Now, when you raise the wing, and here, I'm, I'm going to go off this side here and hopefully the camera will pick it up. Uh, when you raise the wing, you have to simulate gravity. These tires in real life would be heavy and would naturally, as the wing goes up, would naturally swing down. Uh, that's not the case. This is a toy made of, of brass and a little bit of aluminum here and there. And it just doesn't have the weight behind it like a real one would. So when you lift your wing, just make sure you lower this wheel with your finger. Because, it's, I don't know if you can see it here in the video, I'm going to point right in this area here. If you take a look here, watch what's happening in here. As you move this, that arm that's on the wing has to always fall under the arm that's on attached to the mainframe. So let's do it once or twice here, you can see. You always want to make sure that is underneath. I'll just stop here for one second. The method by this way, the method that this system uses is like an open hand on a fist and to lower or raise it depends on the fist. And so the fist part here in this analogy is on the frame and the open hand is on the wing. So what I'll do now is I will raise the wing while dropping the wheel, make sure that that stays and doesn't, that way it will not bind on you. Now I will say before I go any further, you will see a loose fading nuts and bolts here everywhere. That's only because Again, this toy is in its rough state and is about to go into uh, final sanding and then uh, cleaning. So I'm doing it now because I can handle the toy. I should say I'm doing it this way now because I can handle the toy uh, without uh, worrying about marring any paint or anything like that and, and can easily be seen what's happening. So I'm gonna raise this now. And over here we have these locking arms which actually lock into this position or fall into this position once they're in the upward uh, upward position themselves. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is there's just a hole here on this channel. I know my hand is in the way, so please bear with me. And I'm gonna put this locking pin inside here. And as you can see here, how this just simply locks in like so. Maybe I'll have a better luck without my hand in the way. Uh, to raise it again, now this one here moves a bit easier. But when I do paint, sometimes paint does bind up inside uh, these, I call bearing areas, and uh, doesn't 
don't fall. So again, you wanna just make sure you drop this wheel to keep that one arm uh, under the other. And I'll explain what's happening here with hydraulics in a, in a minute in the next section perhaps. And what we're going to do here now is I'm going to simply, again, hopefully you can see this, lock this up, which yeah, this part is not so bad. The, ma the major piece I want to demonstrate here is, I'll have to do this here, uh, pay more, a bit more attention, I have my apologies. There we are. So now this toy is locked up. One of the issues in real life is these channels that, that hold the locking bar and are fixed the hydraulic cylinder is they float up and down so when the wing moves different to the frame it, it kind of floats so to speak but i'll get that to in the next part perhaps i'm getting ahead of myself here and so i'll just quickly turn this around so you can see what it looks like from the from the side and the front we were catching this pretty good okay and we'll stop there for a minute and I'll not go to the next part. Well, for the next part, facing backwards, well, I simply want to demonstrate, and I was starting on the last, on the previous part, which I'll get into here momentarily, is, is how this hydraulic cylinder here is actually quite loose and it moves. I've actually seen on pictures on the internet where this will be in an upper position like this, as I'm doing here, where the other one is fully down. I don't know if it's because of bending or perhaps this seems like a real bad place in real life on the real machines to have gotten dirt and grime and maybe it just wasn't as uh, readily movable as it normally would be. I'm at this point going to just drop the wings for a second or the one wing I should say just to show how you would once you're unhooked how there's a stop lock on this tower piece right here and that's as far as this can go. And, and you can tell what's happening here as, and again, I, my, my, my finger has to play gravity, has to simulate some gravity to make sure that this falls under this, this piece right in here. Now, this does look a bit tippy and wavy and a bit loosey goosey, so to speak, but that's okay. Once this is painted, I will put some micro washers in here and it, it'll firm it up. Um, there may be on occasion where if you, this, remember, this is simulates hydraulic cylinder. Hydraulic cylinder is actually controlled by the tractor, of course, and locked in place. So once it's locked in place here, I'm going to exaggerate to make the point. You can see how the, the wing could float quite significantly holding the cylinder in place because of this mechanism here, okay? But because it's a toy and that's not a real hydraulic cylinder, this may sometimes, if you pop it out too much, may just come out on you. Not to worry, just put it back in and, and, and uh, put it in an upright position. Just a, just a heads up. Again, this is a really different design uh, because besides just the lowering and raising of the overall frame, this is the only hydraulics. These wheels on the wings work far differently. Uh, I'll stop here at, next, at this point and go to the next part. In this next part, what I'm going to do next is lock the entire mechanism, uh, the entire chisel plow in the upright position, in the travel position. Now, the wings I, are relocked in the uh, upright position. So there's a locking bar here that you flip down like so. It'll just touch the, the, the tower, as I call it, on the rock shaft. And you just move a tire on either side like so, just to raise it with your finger. Again, simulating the hydraulics, and you take your locking pin and you just put it in so like put it in there like so, and now it's locked up. As you can tell, it's moving around very freely on the wheels, and it's not uh, dragging on the chisel points. This is a different toy in that uh, it did come with a jack, which you could see right in here, uh, but these jacks were awfully beat up over time and I believe what happened is that this this cultivator can actually tip backwards and set up like that now not so bad I guess if, if it tipped backwards on you, you bring your tractor towards the back of the of the toy uh, the, the cultivator and you could you know maybe push down on it but if that ever think ever took off on you like so 
that's a lot of weight on this tongue. I think you'd have a real time trying trying to pull it up. I've seen on on pictures of how this jack here is actually quite twisted up. So what I'm going to do now is is for those that will get their toys, when you raise this jack, don't go too high because there's always a tipping point where it will actually tip back on you, nullifying the need for a jack. So you want to keep it just slightly in the downward position here. So hopefully you can see that on the camera. I'm now going to move the locking pin off the jack and, my, and the jacks that I make uh, fully work like the real ones. And I'm going to lock this pin back inside here like you would on a real jack. There we go. Now, I can still see this. I'm going to crank the jack down like so. I'm going down, it's going down. And I'm just going to stop here at this point, and there's a bit of bit of wiggle room so that it, it sits. Now, I don't think you can quite see it on the camera, but how there's just a slight downward slope here so that the cultivator, or rather the chisel plow, rests on the jack. And again, if you go too high, it spins backwards. So... For those who will be getting their toy, just be mindful of that, not to go too, too high on the jack. And if you especially want to um, uh, display it in the in this position. Now, over here, you can maybe see, I'll move the, the, the toy over a bit. Here is, oops, here is that arm. And here is this wheel. And you can see what's happening here. This arm has to be under that one underneath here. So I will now take, the take this particular side here and drop, lift this out of the way and pretend I'm gravity, it's going down, it's going down. And you can tell here, using your finger, don't be afraid to use that to simulate gravity, how it's now locked up. And you can see how when that's pushed down, this arm here off the chassis, how it pushes down on this arm, that it keeps this wheel raised. And you can see it right there how none of the points uh, touch base. I do have the nose, uh, the the, uh, the hitch raised in order uh, not to drag the jack around too, too much there. Let's push it back like so. Okay, I'll stop here and go to the next part. In this uh, final part, what I'll do here now is I'll just simply Raise the wheel by on either you can on either side. Just put your finger up against the tire here to raise this. Take the pressure off the locking bar, and it'll fall itself down. And you flip it back like so. And put your pin aside. the uh, The jack is still down, but in this position, there's no need for the jack to be down. So now I'm going to, if I can just make sure that's on camera, I can just crank the jack back. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Crank it back up. It's going back up here, like so. Great. And I'll just pop this pin out. Please bear with me, it never fails when you want to <laughs> get something right on camera, things kind of go a little pull off on here. And I will now just put the locking pin up like so. And the jack's in the upright position, as you can see by that. Uh, by that right there. Um, and this is uh, probably a, as good as way to display the toy in that the wheels are down and the arms are locked up, the jack is up and it sits very, very flat and very, uh, very stable that way. But again, it depends on how you want to. And as you can tell over here, again, please make sure that, that, that these wheels are out before you lower it. What may happen if you don't, it may actually bind up, I think right in here, and this the arm on the wing may go on top of this. And for what I've seen on the, some of the real ones, you could tell there were, pro I think, problems or some, maybe, maybe not the best design in the world, but uh, that I've seen welds in this area. And so it's, it's, it was not unusual, very unusual chisel plow. Uh, I'm glad I made it and, and, and those five very limited toys that are going out will be the only ones that are made and uh, hopefully you'll see this at a toy show either in Canada or the United States and uh, 
there's never been a toy like this made before, uh, from what I understand, either during the, the time it was built in real life or since. And so for those that have bought this, I hope you find this uh, video helpful uh, in how to operate this particular uh, uh, chisel plow. One of the things I find is that uh, not being probably well distributed, it's not well known how to work that great. And the manual is more of an assembly manual. It doesn't quite explain the way I've been able to, uh, to determine it. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and in the next uh, several weeks, uh, these, uh, the series of five toys will be going to their uh, new homes and uh, the prototype will remain uh, in my collection. Uh, finally, uh, one more piece. In the next couple of months, I will be taking this video down because it's being made strictly for those that acquired the toy. I just wanted to make sure that uh, I demonstrated to those that acquired it uh, how it operates because it is very, very different. You know, there are lots of hydraulic pistons on the cylinders on the wings, which has been a normal feature in a lot of toys and a lot of designs, I should say, but not on this one, not on this one. Um, so thank you and I hope you enjoyed the uh, this video.